Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Uh, I have a pleasure to thank you for the invitation to, to speak in this very interesting conference. I learned quite a lot in the opening session about the position of the different countries as far as concerned artificial intelligence. I'm coming from the John Ericsson Center of the European Commission. Uh, the John Ericsson Center is uh, the knowledge manager of uh, the service knowledge management for the European Commission and uh, our main responsibility is to do research and to build uh, the knowledge uh, to support uh, policy making. So uh, our work is really to be sure that uh, future policies, future open policy are based on science. Uh, I will speak uh, today about a report that we are publishing uh, quite soon on the 5th of December call it Artificial Intelligence, a European Perspective. In this report, we try to cover uh, all the aspects that uh, should be of particular concern, of interest as far as concern artificial intelligence. Uh, we have a project that is called uh, Digital Transformation and Artificial Intelligence that was launched uh, one year ago. And the aim of this project is to try to understand uh, what is the impact of digitization on the economy and the society. As you know, in the discussion on the future of Europe, in particular on the white paper or harnessing globalization, if there is a recognition that uh, the digitization of the society is affecting all the sectors and uh, in particular has a strong impact both on the economy and, and, and the society per se. So we, decide, we decided to study more in depth, uh, um, studying in particular also what is happening in some sector like transport, like constructions, like energies. And uh, we soon arrive to the uh, conclusion that uh, artificial intelligence is, is one of the more disruptive technologies that is behind uh, digital transformation. And this has been confirmed also in the previous round table when uh, all people uh, share the view that uh, artificial intelligence is particularly important. Together with other technologies, you see uh, also 5G that is there, uh, internal things, automation and robotics. Uh, the approach of the European Commission is to put together artificial intelligence and robotics. And uh, what is new? What is new is the fact that if we are not acting uh, together as, uh, as European, uh, that we will face a strong competition from US and China. So we need to have uh, our own approach. Um, as probably you know, China wants to become the worldwide leader by 2030, is making massive investment on artificial intelligence. So what should be the European response? What is particular? Uh, challenging us, and that is quite new in a sense, is that this technology have, uh, an, um, have uh, the speed of these technologies. Uh, you can see in this graph that, for example, uh, the adoption of energy uh, in uh, the houses of 25% uh, of the US population takes something like 50, year, 50 years. So this means that there was a long uh, period for a regulator to understand how to regulate energy, energy provisions. If you compare to the adoption of smartphone, today we have uh, uh, more than 100% of the population, so under 8% of the smartphone are sold, so that is even more of the number of people that are living in the world. And this happened in only three years. So in the case of the energy, we have 50 years to decide which is the right policies, in the case of a uh, mobile phone, we have less than three years and this uh, device already deployed uh, everywhere and to everyone. Uh, the second uh, uh, issue that I want to raise is here that artificial intelligence is not bias free. So this technology has uh, a good, uh, I would say, opportunity to improve our life, but uh, uh, and we, we should um, embrace this opportunity but might not be in, uh, uncritical. So it's important that we are uh, understanding that artificial intelligence could be used against the society, could be used to increase uh, cyber crimes, uh, but at the same time there are a lot of opportunity to save life, 
to reduce, uh, uh, to, to have uh, an, uh, an anticipate the diagnosis of, of, of some diseases. So we, we need to be clear about what, which are the benefits and which are the things that we need to pay attention. And then we also think about uh, uh, what is artificial intelligence in terms of the balance between protecting individual rights and protecting societal, societal rights. Uh, a good example is, uh, should we accept the fact that uh, the data from uh, um, health uh, record cannot be shared across, uh, across, uh, uh, across uh, the community that want to develop a solution using this data for uh, training the machine? Uh, just because we want to protect the individual right, or we should find a way in which uh, through the anonymization, anonymization we make this data available and exploitable for uh, identify solution for early disease. And the second thing that uh, still we need to understand is the demystification of artificial intelligence. Today we have a lot of discussion about liability and safety issues, so the self-driving car will kill people, will continue to kill people, also if the algorithm will improve. But if we consider the number of people that will be safe for the fact that the machines are intervening, so are reducing human, human mistake done by people that are drunk driver or people that have, have uh, not a very good uh, behavior in, in driving the car, if you look to the balance, you can see the balance is extremely positive. But people have the difficulty to accept that a robot or a machine is doing something uh, with potential uh, doing mistakes. So it is again is a matter of engaging the society. The other things that has been raised this morning and in which we are particularly interested is which is the impact of the machine on human behavior. Today, we see more and more personal assistants, and we see more and more people that are starting to use this personal assistant to take their decisions. What we are studying is, are these people the skillet? So are they losing the capacity to decide? Pay attention if your capacity to use, uh, uh, when you are using a product like Google Map or similar for in-car navigation, and take your, your, your case and try to see if you have the same capacity than before in orienting yourself. You will notice that you are losing capacities. And uh, in, we are doing, doing some study in particular what this means in terms of the influences how our brain work in the field of music. Uh, for example, if you go to Spotify, now you will see the music that you like. Are you losing capacity to select other music? Are you losing capacity to, to train yourself and, and to enlarge your view? And we, we are studying and we see effectively that these are in a way altering your, your, human, uh, your human capacity. But it doesn't mean that it's a temporary effect or is a permanent effect. We don't know yet. Another issue that we have identified and that was also raised this morning is about uh, there is increased explosion of data. We, we call the Cambrian explosion of data. So the data are growing 40% every year. And the computing power is not growing proportionally. So there is a gap at a certain point. We don't have enough computing power to process all the data. But we see already that there are technological solutions emerging like new powerful chips, uh, uh, new way to Compute, uh, to compute the data, distributing the data on the edge, on the fork, and in the long-term future, we have a quantum computing. One of the aspects of these technologies is that we will uh, consume more and more energy, so we have also to be aware that we have to take care about energy consumption. Today, the data center are already consuming a quite a, a, a very considerable amount of, of, of information. So data is, is the gold, clearly. There is no artificial intelligence without data. This will be covered by the next presentations. And we think that uh, the way to enable artificial intelligence revolution is through datafications so that we have this morning already a lot of uh, example of platforms that are put in place to allow people to use the data and to enrich the data like uh, the internet company when the data are progressively enriched by the contribution of citizens or by the contribution of, of, of the business sectors. 
The last point that we pay attention in the impact on skills, jobs, and economy, I want just to say to you that today there is not a single approach to understand the impact of artificial intelligence on jobs. Uh, the economists are studying, are using different approach, looking about previous uh, industrial evolutions and try to use this as a proxy or are using uh, job transformation sector by sectors. And there will be a of polarization and even distribution that were already raised today. To, to conclude, and, and I apologize, I'm so short and try to cover everything, but I invite you to read the, the report when it will be published, as I say, on the 5th of December. We see that artificial intelligence is a big opportunity to improve our lives, but we should embrace the opportunities and we believe that a Euro approach is absolutely needed because no member state can succeed alone. And this should be based on the European values and, the, and being ethical and inclusive by design. And we need to build on European strengths like robotics, connected and automated vehicles. We need, and that is was uh, again uh, raised this morning, we need a robust computing infrastructure and explore new paradigms of computing distributed to the edge. And we need to, to have good quality data. Uh, the future is not written there, so it's up to us to try to, to define it. I want just to conclude with uh, this picture. I don't know if you know Hiroshiki Ishiguro, is the man that made a copy of itself. So one of the two is a robot. And when my colleague met him uh, in occasion of an intention conference, we were not sure that he was meeting with a robot or with meeting with a person. Thank you very much. Thank you for your attention.